Hello again. Gaze into a mirror, and what do you see? Well, I see my face, of course. But in my face, I see moods. I see shifts of feeling. We humans are really good at reading faces and bodies, because if I can look at you and feel what you're feeling, I can learn from you, connect to you, I can love you. Empathy is one of our finer traits, and when it happens, it happens so easily, perhaps because, and this is brand new science, this is just out of the lab, we may have some special circuitry in our brains that helps us whenever we look at each other. Ask yourself, why do people get so involved, so deeply, deeply involved? with such anguish, such pain, such nail-biting tension over football. Cleveland Browns are gambling on defense. Why are we such suckers for sports? And it's not just sports. We can lose it completely at the movies, at video games, watching a dance. Is there something about humans, humans particularly, that allows us to connect so deeply when we watch other people? Watch them moving, watch them playing, watch their faces. Well, as it happens, scientists have an explanation for this strange ability to connect. It's new. It had never been found on a cellular level before. A set of brain cells found on either side of the head. Among all the billions of long branching cells in our brain, these so-called mirror neurons have surprising power. What we found is the mechanism that underlies something which is absolutely fundamental to the way that we see other people in the world. And it began entirely by accident at a laboratory in the lovely old city of Parma, Italy, where a group of brain researchers was working with monkeys. And they were testing a neuron, that's a brain cell, that always fired, made this sound, whenever the monkey would grab for a peanut. So the lab had all these peanuts around, and whenever the monkey made its move, the neuron would fire. Scientists thought, now here's a neuron that is essential to motion. It's a motor neuron. Then one day, the monkey was just sitting around, not moving at all, just sitting, when a human scientist came into the lab, and when that scientist grasped the peanut, yeah, the monkey's cell fired. Now, the monkey hadn't moved. It was the human that had moved, suggesting that this neuron up here couldn't tell the difference between seeing something and doing something. Seeing and doing were the same. Or more intriguingly, that for this neuron, watching somebody do something is just like doing it yourself. The head of the lab, Giacomo Rizzolatti, thought, wow. The same neurons, one neuron, fire both when the monkey observes something and when the monkey is doing something. It's almost unbelievable. It was surprising because this cell which was involved with motor planning for the monkey turned out to be interested in the movements of other people as well. Some people call them monkey see, monkey do neurons, but the name that stuck is mirror neurons because with them, the brain seems to mirror the movements it sees. This accidental discovery got scientists thinking, doing more tests, and it soon came pretty clear that this is not just a monkey thing. It's a people thing, too. We all know that humans learn by looking and copying. That's what infants do. First you look, then you do. And once you've watched and copied and learned a set of moves, you not only have them in your head, you put your shoe on. If you see somebody else doing it, you can share the experience. And I want to do it with me. They know the moves, you know the moves, so you can move with them. Wow. If you can use the years of training that you yourself have done, learning to crawl, then learning to walk, then learning to eat, this is an incredibly rich set of knowledge that you could apply to the problem of actually seeing what's going on. So that's why when I head down this street carrying all these packages, not only do people watch, look how they're watching. They feel my predicament. Because they know what it's like to carry heavy packages. They all know about carrying. So as they watch me moving, they can feel themselves moving. 
their neurons are mirroring the action. These neurons may be the brain's way of translating what we see so we can relate to the world. The mirror system is the way that you tap into, the way that you harness your own abilities and project them out into the world. And people are really good at watching and translating what we see. Like with just 13 moving dots, that's all there are here, you'll have no trouble recognizing these uh, very ordinary activities. What's more, tests have shown when a person sees a movie like this of his own movement, he'll recognize it immediately as his own. And that's why sports fans tense with the action and wince and leap. Because if you know the game, then your neurons are firing as if it's you playing, giving a whole new meaning to the phrase armchair quarterback. That's why it's so easy to be a sports fan. But there is more, suggests UCLA professor Marco Iacoboni. He thinks mirror neurons tie us not just to other people's actions, but to other people's feelings. So the idea was to try to figure out how the emotional system and this motor system are connected together. 